Welcome participants to lecture number 2 in this week. In this particular lecture, I am going to cover some of the complicated knitting design which you can make on advanced knitting machines. In last lecture, I given you some important advancements in terms of machine functionings which is much much better than the functions that you can observe from v bed machine. Some advancements were like racking where you can shift the bed with respect to the other bed, the possibility of transferring the loop from one bed to other bed, the possibility of individually controlling the needle movement at any location on either of the bed. So, if you have the possibility of these type of control on a particular machines, you can create any type of design. Some of these designs you might have seen when you are going to use any knitted garments like sweaters or t-shirts, you might have seen these loops in your daily life. But trust me, these loops or the preparation of these type of designs are not simple on the machines. So, I am going to show you some of these designs which you might have seen in the daily life and how we actually create these loops, what are the principle, what are the science involved, what are the needle movement during these type of loop formations, I am going to cover in this particular lecture. Some of fabric designs especially tuck designs like cardigan, half cardigan, full cardigan, float designs like Milano rib, rib ripple, I have introduced you in week number 5, but now we are going to move some of the advanced knitting designs and we are also going to look at the simulations, what is exactly happening in the needle movement on the machines during making these designs. So, I am going to show you some of those fabric samples which I am going to cover in next two lectures starting from now. So, let us see some of those fabric structures and I will tell you what type of designs actually I am going to cover. So, you might have seen this type of uh, architecture on a knit fabrics and all of these architectures are created by the loops and needles is performing certain functions to create these type of structures. So, uh, if you closely look at some of these loops, so you can see it here, uh, the columns are actually bending. So, if you see here, the columns are actually bending, these are called cable design. If you, if you see here, if you see this point, here you can see there are holes has been created in the fabric structure. This is called pointer design. If you see this cable and from here you are actually shifting the cable in any direction. This is actually um, in general term this is called Arun design. and. Uh, if you see this fabric, this is just like a terry towel which have been created on the machines. This is, this is very fluffy fabric and loops are on the surface. So, that is why it has the terry appearance. So, this is again terry fabric, again created uh, using advanced knitting. So, you can see how these uh, loops are actually on the surface. If you see another fabric, if you carefully see the colors are actually moving not in the horizontal direction, but with certain angle. So, this is this is also can be created. So, when you have the possibility of partial knitting. So, this is called partial knitting. So, on the same course, not the same color has been used. Two colors are used on the same course. The other fabric which is uh, also possible is the jacquard fabrics. So, here you can see 
the colors are different so on the same code this please remember these are not printed fabrics we created by two different colors of the yarn so you can see this here this is a pink color yarn and then the other one is a yellow color yarn then pink color yarn then yellow color yarn so that is also possible so any colors any position you can get so this is basically a jacquard fabric so how actually um, we make all this on the machine that will be covered in this particular lecture so i have written our department name so this is textile technology iit delhi so how we actually create and what are the principle on the machine how the needles actually perform um the function to create these type of designs that we are going to cover in next two lectures so let's start um with the basic one some of these designs you might have seen and but um, my point here is to let you understand how actually the needle is doing the function on the machine so let's see that we can see like how we can create any type of design on the machine so you can see holes are there different patterns are there you can see uh, these patterns all are created by manipulation of loops in the fabric structures some of these designs are very very complicated and uh, i am going to show you some selected designs and their principle how the needles actually moves on the bed for making these type of designs uh, you can create you can go you can imagine the imagination is unlimited the only important thing here is if you understand how the loops are moving on the bed that will really help you in design so let's move with the first one rib design so i have already introduced you rib uh, where in the same course you have technical front and back loops so on the machines we can create rib design very simply this can be created on a manual weaved machine also so if you see single jersey fabrics where the loops are created on one bed and double jersey fabrics where the loops are created on both the bed so if you see the fabric appearance here you can see there are holes because it's a single jersey fabrics not that dense but if you see the double jersey fabrics it is very dense because you have multiple loops on the front and back side so if you see want to see the animations here one bed is operated here both the beds are operated okay so um, this is how you create single jersey fabric and rib structure on the machine now let's move to the complicated rib structures so here full needles so all the needles are making loops on both the beds so front bed and back bed so all needles are operating okay so this is called full rib or full needle selection rib the other rib is a one cross one rib as the name suggest one cross one it means on each of the bed only one needle is active other needle is not active so for example if you see the animation so on each of the bed only alternating needles are operating rest needles are just sitting ideal so they are not the part of loop formation so this is called one cross one rib here half of the needle from both the beds has been selected and if you can see compare the fabric structure this structure and this structure you can easily see because um, here more loops are there so the fabric looks more denser here you can see the holes are there small small holes are there because fabric is little bit porous so naturally when you see the permeability of the fabrics this fabric will be much more permeable compared to this full needle selection fabric you can also go from one cross one rib to two cross two rib so here in one cross one rib as the name suggested one alternating needles on both the beds are not operating 
in 2 cross 2 rib in both the beds 2 needles are operating, 2 are sitting ideal, 2 are operating, 2 are sitting ideal. So, similarly on the back bed these 2 needles are not operating, these 2 needles are operating, these 2 needles are not operating, these 2 needles are operating. So, this is 2 cross 2 rib. On the machine also you can see this 2 needles, this 2 needles and this 2 needles are operating the other two needles this two and this two are not participating and similarly on the back bed also same nature is there. So, this is how 1 cross 1 rib and 2 cross 2 rib are being created. So, if you see the porosity of the fabric, so in 1 cross 1 rib you can see the holes are smaller compared to 2 cross 2 rib. The reason being we are because here a small portion of single jersey fabric you have created. So, these two loops they are together because of that the holes has been becoming bigger. So, okay. so, you can see if you see this fabric and if you measure the air permeability definitely this fabric will give you more air permeability. If you go for from 2 cross 2 rib to 2 cross 1 rib. So, in 2 cross 1 rib uh, you need to be very careful here. So, 2 cross 1 rib it actually indicates on both the beds you are making 2 loops one needle are not acting. So, if you see the front bed 2 are acting, 1 are resting, again 2 are acting, 1 are resting, again 2 are acting, 1 are resting. Similarly, on the back bed 2 are acting, 1 are resting, 2 are acting, 1 are resting, 2 are acting, 1 are resting. So, if you see the animations here 2 cross 2 in 2 cross 2, 2 are op acting, 2 are resting. So, which is there on both the beds. In 2 cross 1 rib, 2 are acting, 1 are resting. So, you can see here. So, 2 are acting, 1 are resting, 2 are acting, 1 are resting. So, this one is resting, this 2 is acting, this one is resting, this 2 is acting. Similarly, on this side also on the back bed, these two are acting, this one is resting, these two are acting, this one is resting. So, this is called 2 cross 1 rib. So, from the surface it will look like 2 cross 2, but ideally speaking this is 2 cross 1 rib. In terms of technical language, we call this fabric as a 2 cross 1 rib. And because here you can see this is this segment is little bit more denser because 4 loops has been coming together. So, that is why the porosity of the fabric got reduced. So, here again 4 loops together, but here the 4 loops are distributed is much wider reason. So, so that is why the, the pore size is bigger, but here the 4 loops are together in a much smaller reason. So, because of that the porosity is lower. Again if you go from 2 cross 1 rib to this particular structure here do not call this as a rib because um, on the front bed all needles are acting, but on the back bed alternating needles are acting. So, this is uh, not 2 cross 1 please do not get confused with this. So, this 2 cross 1 means like 2 needle are acting, one are resting on both the beds. That is why it is named 2 cross 1, 2 is acting, 1 is resting. But for this architecture where 2 are knitting on the front bed, 1 is knitting on the back bed, 2 are knitting on the front bed, 1 is knitting on the back bed. So, so this is actually we do there is no nomenclature for this type of fabric. It is a rib fabric, but um, we cannot say this as a 2 cross 1. So, if you see here all needles are acting on the front bed, but on the back bed only alternating needles are acting. So, you can see here if you see the 4 loops together these are distributed in much wider region, but if you see 4 loops here they are they are distributed in much narrower region. So, this fabric is much much denser compared to this fabric, so which is visible in the photographs also. So, the permeability of this fabric will be more. Okay. Now, let us move to the 
Perl design. So, I am in Perl designs, I uh, already introduced this in week number 4. Uh, so, in Perl designs, what we do is like we create technical front and back loops in the same column. So, in rib designs, you are creating technical front and back in the same course. In Perl designs, you are creating technical front and back loops in the same column or well directions. So, in Perl designs, so the simplest wall design is uh, 1 cross 1 Perl designs. So, 1 technical front loops, then the next course technical back loops, then front loops, then back loops. So, in the same column, front, back, front, back. So, if you look at the front side and back side, only heads and sinkers will be visible. So, the architecture will be uh, same on both the sides. In rib designs, both side your technical front is visible, but in pearls only technical back is visible in one cross one pearl. So, if you see the animation here, so first this course has been created on the front bed, then by loop transfer it is transferred to the back bed and then back bed is making one course, so this course, then back bed is transferring loop to the front bed and now the front bed is going to create this particular course. So, if you follow the animation, again front bed is transferring to the back bed and now back bed is going to create back loops. So, this is how one cross one pearl is created and they look same on both the sides. Now, let us look at this particular fabric. So, here two technical back and then two technical front in courses. So, uh, and the fabric looks like this. So, there is this two is technical back and then two front and then two back, then two front, then two back and this will look similar on the opposite side. So, if you want to see the animation, so first uh, it get transferred to the back bed. Now, the back bed is making one loop, one course. So, first course is done. Now, the back bed is making second course. So, this second course is done. Now, back bed is transferring the front loops and now the front bed is making course, then in the fourth one again front bed is making course. So, this is how Perl design has been created on the same machine. So, if you have the possibility of transfer of the loops on the V bed machine, you can actually create Perl design. So, there are some designated machines which makes Perl fabrics, but in V bed, if the possibility of transfer is there, you can also create pearl design. Link design. So, apart from uh, rib and pearl designs, there is a possibility of link design. So, anywhere, anytime you can create front and back loops. So, some of these uh, I can show it here. So, the most important or popular one is the basket designs, where there is a one segment of technical front loops and the other segment of technical back loops, then front loops and back loops. So, here um, the cross notation, box notation you can see all technical front loops and then technical back loops, then technical back loops and this is technical front loops. So, this is also possible, any needles can be selected at any position and uh, to create these type of designs we need both the beds. And here you can see 5 needles of the front bed is making front loops, 5 needles on the back bed is making back loops and rest 5 on both the beds are resting. So, in this way you can create basket design. Okay. So, uh, basket design can also be created on manual V bed machines because that flexibility is always there. So, um, this is uh, more simple basket design. Uh, the other complicated designs are also possible. For example, here linking front and back loops, you can see uh, you can get any architectures. Uh, aesthetically, it looks uh, very good. So, if you want to give some pattern on the fabric surface, you can play with the front and back loops. So, I have one small fabric sample also with me. I can show you how linking front and back loops can give you different appearance on the fabrics. So, let us look at these fabric. So, this is the architecture you can get if you are getting technical front and back loops. So, I am going to enlarge this. 
So, uh, if you see this portion, if you see this portion, this is technical front side, then this is technical back side, then this is technical front side. If you go right, this is technical front side, this is technical back side. With this, you can, you can easily observe the pattern and once you relax the fabric, it will give you three dimensional appearance. So, it will just fold. So, if you remember the curling behavior, curling will be very, very important to give a certain kind of dimensional change in the fabric and the whole fabric will look like this. Once you open up, the fabric will sew it technical front and back and once you relax, because of curling behavior, the pattern will look like this. So, uh, you need to understand the science of uh, bending of loops also to understand this behavior. So, linking of uh, the loops is uh, not only important uh, from uh, design point of view, but also to create 3D loops on the fabric surface. So, this is also possible if you create front and back loops. So, you need to understand both the aspects. Now, let us move to the next part, tuck design. So, tuck I have already introduced you, it is always accompanied with the held loop. In tuck design, um, on the machine you can put the tuck at any location. So, here um, if you see the first course is making loop, the second course alternating needles are making tuck, third course all are making loops, fourth course alternating needles are making tuck. So, in one of the column the tuck is there because of that the fabric will if you see this particular column this loop is bigger and this loop is bigger. So, this is nothing but the tuck uh, back side and uh, you can see here this is actually the tuck and this is also so, if you want to see the animation on the back bed uh, are only used, front bed is not doing anything. So, the first course is being formed. In the second course, alternating needles are making tuck, so which can be seen. The third course, all are making loops. In fourth course, again alternating needles are making tuck. You can play any designs on this. Um, the other beauty of tuck design is when you make consecutive tuck in the same column, the, on the fabric it will come like a bead. So, some kind of pearl design will come because tuck multiple heads are there on the same needle. So, once all the loops will be released, a bunch of yarn will be coming on the surface and because of that, that surface will be looking some kind of pearl is coming out from the surface. So, for example, if you see this particular design of the fabric, first course is all knitting, loop is, loops are being formed. In second course, alternating needles are making tuck, third course also tuck, fourth course also alternating needle tuck, fifth course also alternating needle tuck. So, four tuck, one, two, three and four. Four tuck are being formed consecutively on the same needles. So, because of that, four times yarn diameter is coming on the same needle and that will be released in the sixth course. And because of that, a kind of pearl which you can see it here, these are the bunch of the yarn. It is very difficult to observe uh, what is exactly happening on the surface, but if you create this type of fabric, you just try and go and touch at that area. A lot of loops will be there. Uh, in the form of tuck and because of that, it looks like a pearl. So, if you look the fabric from far distance, it will look like some pearl is coming out. It is like a beads of a necklace which will be appearing on the fabric surface. And if you want to see the animation, how it works, so you can see the first needle and the fourth needle is making tuck. So, again this is the second tuck then fourth again tuck, then fifth again tuck and then all the needles will be released. So, you can see here there are lot of uh, 
yarns will be accumulated, some head portion of the loops will be accumulated over there. Because of that, you can see the bunch of loops coming at this portion and because of that, it looks like a pearl coming out from the surface. Naturally, when you make um, tuck, consecutive tucks on the same needles, there is a chances that the needles might break. So, there is always certain limitations on the machine, maximum 3 to 4 tucks you can operate. But if you are moving more than 4 or 5, uh, there is a high chances that needle will break, the head will break because head will not able to control 5 tuck at the same time. So, you need to be very, very careful. Although the from the design point of view, on the surface, it will looks like some 3D projection is coming out. So, the fabric surface will not be labeled, it will be having very rough patches on the fabric. So, this is actually tuck design. So, in tuck, uh, not only the um, pearl will come out, but if you uh, carefully understand all of these designs are actually created by tuck. So, you need to understand how you are creating tuck, whether if you are creating tuck on the front side or back side, that will decide what will appearance will come on the fabric. So, some of these designs are extremely complicated. Uh, here, you can see only the front side of the fabric is there. So, on the back side, tuck will be visible. So, um, some of these designs will be very, very difficult to analyze, but uh, you can imagine most of these patterns on the fabric surface is created by using tuck either on the front side or on the back side of the needle bed. Now, let us move to the float design. Uh, I have already introduced you the float. Uh, float is also accompanied by the held loop. Here, uh, the yarn is not being cached by the needle and after two cores, the needle releases the held loop. So, uh, in float design, uh, here the simplest float design uh, I am showing you here. So, and this is the four courses I am going to create on this machine. So, uh, first course back bed is knitting, second course four consecutive tuck is being formed, third course again four consecutive tuck is being formed and fourth course all are knitting. So, because of that, the fabric will look like this. So, here you can see these loops are much, much bigger compared to the first and sixth column. So, compared to this column and this column, in between the loops will be much, much bigger which is shown here. And on the back side, the float will be visible. If you see here, this is the floating yarn which will be visible on the back side of the fabric. Let us see the animation here, what exactly is happening. So, here the first needle and the sixth needle is actually making loop and four needles are making tuck, uh, sorry, float simultaneously. So, here you can see, so first course all are knitting, second course only two are knitting, four are resting. In third course, again two are knitting, four are resting. In fourth course, all are knitting. So, this is how you create this fabric structure and the appearance will look like this. Now, let us move to the this one. Here alternating the same pattern, but here alternating courses is repeating. So, here um, first courses loops, second courses float, third courses loop, fourth courses float. So, because of that, the fabric will look like this and on the back side, you can easily see, see this here, there are two courses which is making float simultaneously. Here, only one course is making float. So, you, if you see, want to see on the machine, the first course, all are knitting, so this course. Second course, only two are knitting, four are resting. Third course, all are knitting and fourth course, again two are knitting, four are resting. So, this is how these two fabrics are different. So, these are simple float designs. Uh, in float also, if you understand um, the floating pattern of the needle, you can come up with very unique design. So, some of these designs are very, very complicated, but uh, most of these designs are actually being created um, by making float either on the front side or back side of the needle.
here you are actually looking the float on the back side. So, these are the back side portion of the loops. Here again on the back side and the other side if you somewhere see uh, here you have much bigger bigger loops. So, this is in this the float is being formed on the back side of the fabric. Again um, these patterns are also very very uh, complicated, but um, it again depends entirely on the imagination of the designer how what design he actually wants to create on the fabric surface with the help of knitting function. With this I am stopping this particular lecture, here I have already in, uh, introduced you tuck design, rib design, pearl design and float designs. All of these terms were known to you uh, in last uh, 5 weeks. In the next lecture I am going to give you um, indication of more complicated designs where cable, pointer, pile fabric, jacquard fabric will be introduced. So, stay tuned, thank you very much for the listening.